in a faraway land. There live two brothers. One brave and bold. The other, not so much. Woo! Courtney, will you make funny faces to entertain me? <laughs> no! Never triangle face. I hate triangle face. It scares me. The star. I'm here to steal a beautiful virgin that looks just like <gasps> her. And just how do you plan on doing that? Magic. You must journey with your brother to rescue his bride. Or you can face banishment from the kingdom. Shit. Tell me, um, Your Highness, it's been released in Ireland today. For those who haven't seen the trailer, which I will link to on this, what is it? Uh, well, Your Highness is sort of an homage to the films that David Gordon Green, the director of Pineapple Express, and myself grew up on. You know, everything from Kroll, Beastmaster, Conan the Barbarian, Dragon Slayer. These were some of the first films that really caught our imagination when we were kids. And, and this movie is basically like a love letter to the perverted, like, 12-year-old in David and myself. You know, we loved these movies growing up, and we wanted to make one of those films, and honestly, even duplicate the sort of sense of humor that we had at that age. Brother, I don't think you'll need that armor. I will quest the way I like. Here I come. And you did it really well. Yeah, quite we, really, we really rude. channeled that, that young, juvenile, uh, dick-obsessed, naked woman, uh, you know, vibe, yes. Yeah. How are you going to make me love you? If your vagina is anything like my hand, there will be no problem. From the Q&A last night, you didn't seem to think, you don't seem to think of this as a serious movie. You're not trying to be anything more than... Yeah, actually. exactly. I mean, the moment that you put a minotaur cock in a film, you're basically subscribing to the fact that you're not really making this one for the critics. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I suppose the questions that I have is, you, look, you've been on a very grueling publicity schedule for this. This is your last stop after coming from London yesterday, after doing so many plates of the back. Yeah, I've been, on the road, I've been on the road for a month of this film. We've, we toured a bunch of colleges in the US, and then we've done New York and Los Angeles, and now we've come over here, and tomorrow it ends it all. But, uh, you know, I've been on these tours with movies that I haven't loved, and so a movie like Your Highness that I do believe in and think is awesome and cool, it's not bad to come out and just meet people who've seen the movie and talk to them about it and spread the good word, but it will be nice to not have to answer any more questions about this movie after okay. tomorrow. Okay, well, let me ask you some questions <laughs> our board members would, would like answered. From uh, Johnny Ultimate, we have... You started your career in David Gordon's green, somber, slow-paced All the Real Girls. I think it's safe to say your latest film with him is very different. Having made your girls and your having made your name in comedy, would you like more opportunities to work in dramas like Real Girls or Up in the Air, or do you think yourself and Green will work on smaller dramas again? Uh, I definitely think Green will definitely be into more dramas again. I mean, I know that uh, just like moviegoers don't always want to see the same movie every weekend, you know, as a filmmaker, David has definitely expressed to me that he's not always interested in making the same type of film. So just as much as he's kind of done these stoner comedies, I think you're going to see a lot more different stuff from him in the years to come as well. As far as me, I'm the same way. You know, I appreciate all kinds of movies and uh, I tend to just make choices based on what I would want to see in the movie theater. So if something dramatic came across my desk and I liked it, I would definitely consider doing it. Cool. Uh, Hank Jones has a weird question. You've been in some very funny films, but what I want to know is, what do you think is the worst film that you have been in? You know, that's a hard question to answer. It's kind of like if asking a parent to decide which one of their children they like more or less. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you de I'm gonna let you decide what you think it is. Yeah, Hank Actually, Jones, you can decide what I'm, you think. I'm and you're probably right. Yeah. Related to that, I was thinking about the film last night and there's some lovely about Your Highness and there's some lovely homage shots to Lord of the Rings. If we work together, we can destroy Lazar once and for all. And I, I remember an interview with Peter Jackson where he said, oh well, if we, ha if we had the budget, we'd have done much more with this film. Was there, and you said last night that the film was, was a, a comedy film budget, so was there more that you'd love to have done with Your Highness with, with a bigger budget? Because it's quite impressive. Yeah, you know, the original version of this script was probably, it was estimated to be cost somewhere around like $200 million, which is obviously totally reckless and irresponsible, and no one should ever fund a movie that expensive that ultimately is just a giant penis joke. Uh, and, and for us, it was like, you know, the limitations of the budget, uh, I think it just made us have to get creative about how to really give a movie scope when you don't actually have the budget to 
to really have that scope. And that was one of the main reasons of why we came to shoot in Belfast. You know, we scouted all these locations and, you know, we don't have castles in America. We don't have landscapes like this in America. You know, like our big epic landscapes are like the West and stuff. And to us, the West felt more sci-fi than it did fantasy world. And so when we came and scouted here and we saw a place like the Giant's Causeway and Tullymore Forest, it instantly just was like, this is what we had imagined this movie looking like, you know, and, and for us that the landscape was, it was, it was a big factor in how we could achieve this epic look because you could just put actors walking through Tullamore Forest and suddenly the movie seems gigantic. Sure that you run into no danger. With our huge muscles, we shall protect you. Really? Really. That didn't really go as planned. Um, Cheryl would like to know two things. Have you ever played Dungeons and Dragons or any tabletop pen and paper role play game? Uh, you know, I, I went to one D and D game when I was like in ninth grade, and I had a good time playing it, but it was something that I really couldn't see myself getting too into. Maybe it's because I didn't have the right group of dudes around me questing. You know, I felt I, you know I think that in order to really get into D and D, you probably need uh, you need some cool dudes that you can you know gang up with. And I only, I didn't th these guys were not that cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, and did you ever think you'd be on a movie promotion spree around Europe? Uh, I, you know, I did. That's one of the awesome things about making films is you do get to travel a lot. You know, up until like six years ago, I'd never even been to Europe before. And now I've been here multiple times. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's always cool. And it's always good to take a step back and always appreciate the fact that, you know, your job is allowing you to meet all these different people and go to all these cool countries. And, and I know yeah. your wife is upstairs in this hotel. Um, how is she enjoying the schedule? She digs it. I would really like to have her deal because she just goes to these cool towns and actually gets to go out and spend my money and go have fun, <laughs> which is cool. I, I would like the chance to do that. Uh, your favorite swear word? Uh, it's a tough one. I got a few. I like... Uh, I think fucker is really good. Cocksucker is cool. And I also like dickhead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Turd to Turd would like to know, Kenny Powers is obviously a role model for young kids and the older members of the male species, but does he bring any of his characteristics to the character or is it an opportunity for you to cut loose and be someone else entirely? Yeah, you know, Kenny Powers is definitely a performance. I, uh, Jody Hill and myself grew up in the South and so we grew up around a lot of guys that acted like this. And I think it's a way of us to sort of channel all the observations we had about some of the people that, you know, we grew up around in Virginia, North Carolina. So, uh, yeah, Kenny Powers is just a cool way to pay homage to all the assholes that fucked with us when we were kids. Cool, I've only got a couple more questions. The studio decides to give you a blank check, Otakon says, uh, to make whatever movie you want, no restrictions. What do you do? And yeah. who would direct it, produce it, and star in it besides you? You know, honestly, it's a tough question to ask because Your Highness has always been that movie. And now that that has happened, I have to figure out a new crazy batshit movie to make that I would never think a studio would invest in. But Your Highness, honestly, for the longest time, has been that movie of like, if the fucking world ends and we're allowed to make anything we want, what would we make? And Your Highness is literally that movie. You know, Natalie Portman, James Franco, Charles Dance... And a Minotaur's penis? Like, who's going to fund that movie? Amazing yeah. cast. Um, how much screen time do you have in a new Beastie Boys movie or short film with so many people involved? Did you have to resort to any freestyle or breakdowns, battles for extra lines, or to steal other people's lines? Well, the beauty of it is, uh, so the Beastie Boys video is a sequel to the Fight for Your Right to Party video. Mm -hmm. And uh, it picks up where, the la where that last video left off. And Seth Rogen, Elijah Wood, and myself play the Beastie Boys. It was a three-day shoot. We were the only actors there for all three days. We, we are the Beastie Boys. And along the way, we encounter all these other celebrities and crazy characters. And then near the climax, we encounter an alternate version of the Beastie Boys, played by Jack Black, John C. Riley, and Will Ferrell. And uh, yes, there is a dance battle to the death. Break it down, Ed Rock! We bring... A super fresh, old school throwdown dance contest from the future. Oh, you motherfuckers like to dance? Stand ready to be signed! <laughs> you, that sounds <laughs> incredible. Um, what's your favorite type of hot sauce? Uh, I love tapatio okay. and sriracha, yes. Pirates or ninjas? Uh, pirates. I feel like ninjas are a little played out. Ninjas felt a little 90s, you know? Into uh, pirates these days. Uh, and the obvious question that everybody wants to ask, but nobody will, how good was it seeing Natalie Portman in the song? What right of you to spy on a bathing woman from simply keeping an eye on her? Oh God, she's looking at us. Remain perfectly still. Uh, it is, it was, you know, one of the greatest moments of my life. <laughs> uh, it was funny because that was on the call sheet for a long time. And, 
you that was the one day that no crew member called in sick. Everyone showed up to work that day. It was incredible. And of course, it helped her with uh, Black Swan, which she filmed afterwards. It did, it did, it did, it did indeed, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to take credit for Natalie's Oscar winning performance, but I am going to say that I maybe gave her a few tips along the way that, that maybe could have enhanced her performance. Who knows? We'll see. Here we go. Thank you yeah. very much for answering those questions. Thank you. What the fuck? You've got to suck out the venom! I don't want to suck it, you suck it! I can't suck my own venom! Yes, you can, I'll help you! Suck it! Suck your venom! I can't reach you with my mouth! Gordy, suck the venom! I've never sucked venom! Suck it! Nice. Highness. Finally, alone. cock a doodle -doo. Thaddeus? Yes? I've not been able to stop thinking of you. What a coincidence. I was just about to finish thinking of you.